A buddy of mine told me to explore this library called safe-result. It's a Python library. I think it's pretty neat. I think it's also quite elegant. And unfortunately, that is also the issue with this library. And I wanted to make a video because I think it's a general thing where it's very counterintuitive, but whenever I have this feeling of, oh, that seems elegant, I might want to use that, that's usually also the moment where I take a step back. And again, I want to explain why in this video. So let's start by just explaining what safe result does. So normally you have a Python function, so I'm just going to write hello and it's going to return a string, just hello, right? Nothing mega fancy or anything like that. I can call it, hello comes out, whoop de doo Now, what the safe result gives us is a decorator. It also gives us a bunch of other tools, but this is the gist of it. You're able to declare a function that outputs something that's a little bit different. Right now, I get a result back, and we can see that the result tells us that we're okay. So I can uh, check the type of the thing that comes out, by the way. This is a safe result dot okay. And uh, what we can do is we can make this result not okay by asserting false, not okay, exclamation point. Now we are going to get something completely different. We're gonna get an error object that's gonna try to capture the error message or in fact, the uh, entire error actually. So, and to explain why this is uh, definitely different than normal behavior, if I were to now run this as normal without the decorator, you're gonna see it get an assertion error. This would break the entire flow of the program. The entire program would exit. And by adding this decorator over here, we will always have a safe result, hence the name of the library. And yeah, this is extra behavior. This is the building block of the library, you could say. And those building blocks are usually a great place to start a tutorial, but understanding what a library can do is not the same as explaining how you want to use the library. So hopefully it's clear this is what it does, but you might wonder, well, why is that useful? And the reason why it's useful is that you can chain a lot of these safe commands together. So as an example, I have a function here called mimic request. We're gonna mimic that we're making a request and that we're gonna get some information about a user. So some user ID and some score comes out, right? Some backend is giving us this. And again, a result object is gonna come out. So that result object is gonna have information about whether or not this went okay, but it also comes with a couple of helper methods that let us chain things together. And the main thing, which I, again, think is pretty cool and elegant, is that you can take the output of this function and then you can pass it along, pipe it to another function. So in this case, I could take the output of this and pass it along to this function where we are going to check if the score is good. I'm assuming that the user has some sort of a score that comes out, fraud or something, I don't know. And the score has to be high enough, otherwise the score is bad. And if we pass this check over here, we're gonna go to another function that's gonna check whether or not you are blacklisted. And again, we're doing an assert statement check and we are uh, confirming indeed, maybe with a message that something is up. We have another method at the bottom over here. Uh, here, what I'm doing is I'm pretending that I'm fetching some more data. I'm gonna attach that. So you're also able to take data in and add some information to it. Uh, but there's also a print statement here. Now, the thing that is, again, pretty cute and pretty elegant is that you're able to chain these things together. So as said before, uh, what comes out of here is a result kind of an object. It's either an error or it's okay, but that does come with this and then method. And this is how we can take the output of this function and then pass it along to another function, namely this one. The output of that goes along and it goes along and you can see that we've got this pipeline of functions over here. And what's kind of nice is that you don't have to assign this to a variable or anything like that. You can just uh, pipe and type and chug along. So, you know, that's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. And at the end of this long chain, you can also confirm like, hey, uh, is this okay? And if it's not okay, we're gonna print that something went wrong. So let's actually do that. Let's uh, set the score of that user here to be something that's super duper low. And when I now go down here, we can indeed confirm that indeed something has gone wrong. One thing that's cool about this flow, by the way, is that we also block. So at this point in this pipeline, this is the step that broke. So we're also not gonna bother with these two steps over here. And to confirm that, notice that I added a print statement to the check amount function over here. So we can also see that this function didn't run because otherwise we would see this print statement all the way down over here and we don't uh, let's again go back up and maybe set this number to be uh, somewhat higher right now we can actually see that uh, this thing went just fine so the way you would typically use this right is you would have one block that is running multiple functions and then some result comes out and the whole point is that you can then perform checks on this result to figure out what you got to do if something broke then there might be different paths of things that you want to do Depending on the type of error, you might be able to branch off. You can do that with if statements. You can also do case matching and, you know, good stuff. Another thing that I thought was also potentially quite cute is uh, from safe result import uh, trace 
back of, I think. Yeah, something like that. So I can do trace back of, and I can take that result. Right now, there is no trace back in that result. But if I were to do something like uh, trigger another warning, then you can also get the trace back out. And this is a string, so you can also check for string messages. So, you know, you, you can do a lot of interesting and cool things. And also the way that you could maybe pitch this library is that it is more convenient to just take this variable over here and do all sorts of checks on that. The alternative might be that you're going to do a whole lot of try catch statements inside of all these separate functions. And then you got to think about, OK, on what level do I want to do this? handling of the error. Do I want to do it on a higher scope or on a lower scope? And uh, basically the whole idea of taking this functional approach is that you fold everything. And there's actually a name for this as well. People sometimes like to refer to the train track style of programming. So let's say there's a train track. This is the train track of your program. And then if something goes wrong, we go off track onto this uh, new one. And the whole idea is that one of these tracks is called OK and the other one is called error. And this might happen at one point in time, sort of one junction, one function, you could say. And uh, there might be another thing that goes wrong later, right? But you are still going to be on a track and this will repeat and this will repeat. But no matter what variable comes out, you do know it's going to be in only one of two states. It's either going to be OK or an error. And the thinking is with this style of, you know, functional and somewhat principled way of programming uh, that this does simplify things. You only have to worry about two different states and you got to know how to handle them. Uh, you can also have not just one pipeline, but maybe two pipelines that follow each other up. And there's all sorts of things that you could do. This is a design choice. And you could also argue that there's some elegance with this, right? So if you're like me, you look at this and you kind of go, huh, that's kind of neat. Maybe I should use it in a bunch of projects and introduce it. And if you're going to do that, you're probably going to learn this one awkward lesson. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that if you are a Python person, then you look at this and you think, well, there's a Python way of doing this. If you want to put everything in a variable, that's one way of doing it. But theoretically, what you could also do is maybe try to run uh, a pipeline like this. And then, you know, maybe what you could do is really do the bare bones thing where you forget about all the functional stuff. You just put this into a variable and then, you know, you uh, got variable two over here, which is the result of uh, doing score is goods to A. And, you know, this is not necessarily an elegant uh, pipeline or anything like that. But when you're in Python and when you want to try to catch some exceptions, you use a try accept block. And, you know, for good measure, you wouldn't accept everything. You might be able to do some principled things here. But when I think about Python, when I think about this problem of, oh, you want to catch errors, well, the Python way of doing it is to use this mechanic over here. Now, again, you could look at this and say, ah, that's a little bit less elegant. And, you know, it's not a false claim. But I want to push back a little because you can also have the orc brain attitude, as it were, where imagine this is a program and it's failing. If orc brain were to look at this, orc brain would go, ooh, me see, try, accept. Me know what that is. Me know what to do. Zug, zug, I can work. Instead now, imagine that something is going wrong with the code base and it looks like this. And then, you know, a colleague has never seen this code before. Again, the orc brain triggers and you're going to get something like, oh, this method chain is new. There are custom types and custom functions over here. Me need to think now. Work, work, sad. It's, it's a bit of a gross exaggeration, of course, and I'm using orc terms. But, but the bigger point that I want to make here is that, yes, this is more elegant, but elegance is not the same as clarity. And that's the part that's making me doubt if it's a good idea to introduce something like this to a code base. If somebody totally new is going to go into the code base and try to understand what's going on, then they have to learn two things now. First of all, they need to understand the program that's at large. Second of all, they also have to now understand the tools that were used to build the program. And sometimes it's totally fine because using a web framework is better than inventing one yourself. But in this particular case, you could argue the Python language actually has a mechanism to deal with this situation. So maybe it's better to go with a standard boring Python mechanism than to introduce a more exciting and perhaps more elegant uh, library. So, you know, for a personal project, something like this might be nice. But again, I try to worry about the two years from now, what will happen then moment. And then you might totally forget about this API. And for that situation, uh, you could definitely make the point that maybe a try accept block, normal way of doing it in Python, that that might be better. So uh, just remember, I do want to give compliments to the people that made this. I do think it's, you know, a library that has good taste. It definitely feels like it took some ideas from different languages, uh, maybe even languages don't have a try catch uh, system, and that they made an implementation for Python, which, you know, totally fair game. But uh, again, elegance is not the same as clarity. So think twice, even though, again, cool library.